Hello, my name is Richard Finnefrock. I'm a principal in the public accounting firm of Peterson Sullivan. Uh, we're located in Seattle, Washington. I've been in public accounting for 26 or so years now and been focusing in the hospitality industry for approximately the last 16 years. Today in my segment, I'd like to cover some new information for you that will help you in filing your 2016 federal income tax returns and also a few ideas which may help you in saving taxes for the year. First off, there are some new deadlines for filing various informational reporting forms. Um, beginning for 2016, W-2s that are filed in 2017, as before, the employees have to be issued their W-2s by January 31st of 2017. In prior years, those same forms then were filed with the Social Security Administration by February 28th. Well, there's a new filing deadline that those also have to be filed by January 31st with the Social Security Administration. Next, 1099 miscellaneous forms are also due by January 31st instead of February 28th as previously filed. And that's for any services where you pay an individual or a company $600 or more during 2016. You have a reporting obligation to report that and disclose that to the IRS on Forms 1099 Miscellaneous. So in preparing for issuing those Forms 1099, uh, be sure that you have all names, addresses, and taxpayer ID numbers for anybody who you did issue payments totaling $600 or more for the year and also perhaps in your accounting system if there's a methodology for having that set up so you can quickly identify who those people are that you did issue payments totaling $600 or more for a year would be very helpful. In addition to the reporting requirement of Forms W-2 and 1099s, as a restaurant owner who has employees that are tipped in the ordinary course of business, if on a typical business day you employ more than 10 employees, then you are also required to file an annual Form 8027, which reports the total amount of tips earned by your employees during any calendar year. I've had the question as to whether that 10 employee count is based upon just the number of tipped employees or if that would be all employees in the restaurant. My recommendation is it's better to file a form if you're not required to rather than not filing a form when you are required to. So on a, on a typical business day, if you generally employ more than 10 employees, regardless of what position they are in, I would suggest filing the annual form 8027. And that filing is due on February 28th. There's no change to the filing due date for that form. Now, as far as income tax filings go for your business, there have been several different changes in the due dates for those tax returns. If, you, if your business is structured as a partnership, the filing due date is now March 15th. So for the 2016 tax return, that will be March 15th of 2017. If you're formed as an S-corporation, your S-corporation return is also now due March 15th of 2017. There is no change to the due date for that filing. If you are formed as a C corporation, then instead of filing March 15th of 2017, you now have until April 18th of 2017. But moving on to some tax savings ideas that you could do between now and the end of the year. There has been a change or an increase in the dollar limit for the amount of small equipment purchases that you can expense in any year. It had formerly been that only equipment purchases costing less than $500 could be expensed in a given year. The IRS has increased that threshold to $2,500 a year now. So those types of items that you were purchasing that might cost $800, $1,200 that you used to have to capitalize and depreciate for income tax purposes, you can now simply expense them directly on your income tax return. For other items that cost more than $2,500, you are allowed, to the extent of your otherwise taxable income, you are allowed to expense those items fully in the year that you purchase them through depreciation 
for 100% of the cost. And, and there is a dollar cap limit on that. It's $500,000 of certain ex, of these types of expense deductions can be claimed on your income tax return. But again, that's limited to the amount of taxable income you would otherwise report. There is also what's called 50% bonus depreciation. So on equipment, furniture, fixtures acquired during the year that are, exceed $2,500, or if you happen to do a remodel or refresh of your restaurant operations, then you could expense up to 50% of the cost of those improvements on your tax return for 2016. Now, if you happen for some reason, if you happen to install an elevator or an escalator in your property, those types of costs will not be eligible for the 50% bonus depreciation. In addition to those items, if by the end of the year you should happen to donate food inventory to a charitable organization, then there's an enhanced deduction allowed for restaurant operations for such food donations. Typically, the amount of the donation deduction would be limited to whatever your cost was to acquire that inventory. Now, there's a provision that allows you to not only deduct the cost of that inventory, but 50% of the amount of profit that you would have realized if you sold the inventory. So that's an enhanced deduction for inventory of food that's given to further the charitable intent of an organization that's for the needy, ill, or infants. Now the charity has to provide you with a written receipt documenting that they received the inventory the value of the inventory and that they will follow the rules required to allow you to get this enhanced deduction. Another tax saving concept to not forget about is the tax credit allowed to you as an employer of employees who are regularly tipped for a tax credit for the amount of Social Security and Medicare taxes that you pay on the tips that your employees receive. Now that's a state straight tax credit versus a deduction for payroll taxes. So the tax credit is incredibly more valuable to you than the deduction. In addition to the federal tax credit that you are allowed for social security taxes paid on tips earned by your employees, you may also be entitled to what's called the work opportunity tax credit. That's a tax credit based upon a percentage of the compensation you pay to your employees if those employees fall within one of 10 different targeted groups. Those 10 groups include qualified veterans, members of needy families that receive government assistance, certain ex-felons, and individuals or, their, or family members who are receiving food stamps. In order to avail yourselves of the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, there actually has to be a pre-approval of the individual by the Washington Employment Security Department. In the information showing on your screen, there is a link to the Department of Employment Security's website that will help you walk through the process of applying for the Work Opportunity Tax Credit. Um, there are a number of companies that offer the service of going through the administrative process of making the application and doing the calculations to determine how much of a tax credit you are entitled to. So in summary, planning ahead for your 2016 income tax filings, uh, be ready for the shorter due dates for various tax returns depending upon the nature of your business. Consider acquiring furniture, fixtures, and equipment by the end of the year. You don't even have to have paid for it by the end of the year. You just have to purchase it, have it on site, and have it in service by December 31st in order to claim a deduction for it. And finally, if you're not already availing yourselves of the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, do consider uh, following up with that program for 2017 as you may be entitled to the tax credits going forward.